This is Andrew Davey at Nevada Ford, and we're here with uh, Laura Packard uh, outside UMC. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for uh, being here. So first off, you know why are you why are you here at UMC on a Wednesday night? Uh, I have stage four cancer, uh, Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma. I'm uh, undergoing chemotherapy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Obamacare is what's keeping me alive and what's going to cure me. So keeping my health insurance is very, very important to me. So how has Obamacare, also known as the Affordable Care Act, been able to keep you alive? Um, I'm self-employed, so I have a policy on the exchange. Uh, I have had an Obamacare policy ever since uh, 2014 when, uh, they first, uh, uh, when the exchange first opened. Uh, I've been self-employed off and on for a decade, so I mm -hmm. had plans before then, but those plans had all kinds of fine print. I was never sick, so it was never a problem. I never had to test my insurance, but now I'm giving my insurance a workout. So, so basically you were having problems getting insurance until the Affordable Care Act kicked in, including the exchange? I was able to get insurance because I was young and healthy, but were those things to change, I wouldn't have been able to get insurance anymore. So what concerns you about what's happening in D.C. this week, specifically with the Senate, with the process that kicked off with the vote over the motion to proceed? Okay, well, all of the bills that they're talking about right now will hurt people with pre-existing conditions. Sometimes it's really obvious. Like when they uh, take their protections off, sometimes it's more subtle by setting up two plans. They will price out sick people from insurance and only healthy people will be able to afford it. So every single one of those plans has flaws that will hurt people like me. And I think that uh, they need to start over. If the whole point of health insurance reform is to make good comprehensive coverage available to everybody, what they're doing is going to make it more expensive and less available. It doesn't solve problems, it only creates more. Well, so far, Senator Heller has voted against two of these Trump care proposals. So, do you think he's on the right track? What else do you want Senator Heller to do? I don't know what he's going to do, and that's one of the reasons why we're here in the 100 mm -hmm. degree heat. I have advanced cancer. I could be at home right now, but I am here sweating because it's that important to me and my friends' lives. Uh, he's voted, he's said every which way on this issue. He's voted every which way on this issue. We don't know what he's going to do, and we don't have a lot of confidence given, all, uh, given the way that he's flip-flopped in the past. And I, uh, Nevadans need to be paying attention and calling him every day. And finally, uh, just a little while ago, uh, Governor Sandoval signed on to a letter with several other governors asking the Senate not to even vote for the so-called skinny repeal bill. Right. So are you hoping Senator Heller listens to him? And what else would he have to say to the senator in these final critical hours? I do. I'm, I'm a Democrat. I don't, I don't hide that. That's, that's a... Everybody knows that about me, but I greatly respect Governor Sandoval, a Republican, for putting the best interests of Nevadans first instead of the billionaire donors. So I, I really respect what Sandoval has said. Uh, he's absolutely right that even the skinny version sounds like, oh, skinny, who doesn't want that? Well, 16 million people, 20% yeah. premium increases, and people on the individual insurance market like me, we may not even be able to get a policy after they're done breaking the insurance, the individual insurance market. Yeah.